Yes. Hi. How are we doing in the back, audio-wise? We okay? Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right here? Got it. So Stephen Fox, I was here last week uh, with the Center for Entrepreneurship and uh, the Rollins Center up on the, on the fourth floor. I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about some of the resources that are available to you specifically out of the Rollins Center. And then if we have time to talk a little bit about my background, just so you have a sense for that as you think about your own career and the, and the choices that you make in life. Uh, the whole purpose of the lecture series is for you to get a sampling from men and women who have uh, been in business or in technology and to say, you know what, I want to pattern my life after that, or you know what, half of that I like and part of it I don't, and I want to go in a little bit of a different direction. But for you to kind of take a look at all these different individuals and what they have to say, and then to help you make decisions uh, for your own life. Um, the Rollins Center is named after Kevin Rollins and his wife, uh, donors to BYU. Uh, Rollins, Kevin Rollins was with, was with Dell Computer for a number of years, uh, made some very good money and donated a lot of it to BYU so we could kick off uh, entrepreneurship uh, here at BYU. So we're grateful for the Rollins family for uh, their namesake and for uh, contributing in the way that they have. Um, the, uh, I think I may have mentioned briefly last week, but we have a rich history here. Over the last six years, uh, BYU's uh, entrepreneurship program has finished in the top 10, uh, both at the undergraduate and graduate level, and we're very proud of that. So you've come to an excellent place to learn about innovation and entrepreneurship. One of the things that uh, students don't often understand is that we're trying to pull from disciplines across campus to be involved uh, in innovation and entrepreneurship. And so that's what this is trying to get across. And some of you fit into these different boxes. And personally, I'm grateful to, to have you here. We, just, we don't want a situation where it's just tanner building people. We have some of those. That's great. But we want to reach across campus and let you know what the resources are so that you can uh, expound upon uh, innovation and, and uh, entrepreneurship. Um, the, the vision statement that we have for the center reads like this. We would like to be the global leader in campus-inspired innovation and entrepreneurship. And uh, it's a pretty lofty goal, but as you can tell by the rankings, at least within the United States, we're doing well. I think we would probably do well globally, too. I, don't, I can't say with a definitive statement that we're the global leader, but we're close to it. And so we'll continue to strive in that, in that direction. And uh, we want you to prepare, as the mission statement says, to be leaders in innovation and entrepreneurship. And uh, also understand that you can have some uh, relationships that get established here with, um, as undergraduates that can stay with you for the rest of your life. Whether they are relationships between students, maybe you'll end up teaming up and pursuing a business idea, or it's the relationship that you can establish with mentors. I talked last week briefly about the mentorship program that we have, where we have industry people, graduates of BYU typically, who love giving back and meeting with you as students. Those relationships can also stay with you for your entire life. Who knows, you may meet with a man or a woman who's a graduate that we connect you with and you discuss a business idea or two and you end up really hitting it off. And for the next two or three decades, you end up with a great relationship with this individual. And that's part of the experience that you can have at BYU. Um, so just to be very tactical about it, there's two ways for you to kick off that relationship. One is to go to a website called getmentoring.com. You register for free. And uh, you gain, it helps you gain access to the profiles of about 150 or so mentors who are willing to meet with you. So you can look at the profiles and say, you know what, I really want to meet with Amy Reese Anderson or with uh, Nick Greer or whomever. You look at their profile and say, I like that person's background. I'd love to have a breakfast with them or at least a phone conversation or maybe a Skype conversation. And you can have questions prepared, have a nice conversation and see where it goes uh, from there. And we also, of course, want to have a, a great relationship with uh, all alumni, not just, not just those that provide mentoring. There's four key areas that we look at in the Center for Entrepreneurship. And uh, I think I talked about it briefly. There's curriculum. You're participating in it here. I mentioned 32 courses at the undergraduate level. So if you get the bug and you want to go deeper into innovation and entrepreneurship, take a look at the full curriculum that you have, that we have. Come up to 470 and uh, Nate can walk you through 
the different classes that you can take a look at and see if you want to add to your schedule in semesters to come. We provide these networking opportunities so that you can meet other students and uh, see which ones are of like mind. Maybe you meet somebody on the technical side and you have business talent or vice versa and you want to pursue an, an idea together. We have competitions uh, and uh, Tyler Young in his brief uh, announcement a few minutes ago talked about a series of competitions that we have at BYU. Um, we have four or five that are important and interesting to students. They start all the way back in the fall. At the end of September, we have something called the Big Idea Pitch. Any of you participate in the Big Idea Pitch? Any of you pitch? Oh, heavens. That's sad. Okay, we need at least one. But. So that's where you, you present for 90 seconds and try to get across your business idea. And there are judges there. And there are some cash prizes uh, awarded to those uh, who did fine in that competition. Then what those students do is that they end up teaming with others and they form teams. And so through the months of October, November, December, they're building out their business ideas. And the next competition in the series is the business model competition. Um, the registration for that is a week from this Saturday, so about 10 days from now or so. And uh, uh, the winners of that can earn several thousands of dollars. And basically, it's not very complex, but the business model is, how do you go out and prove that idea that you have? Um, how, do you go out and, how do you know what's the right idea? Well, you go out and you talk to potential customers. You don't talk to mom or dad or your brother or your friend <clears throat> or your friend because they care about you and they're probably not going to give you an honest response if, they, if, it's not, if it's a bad idea, right? So we have you go out and talk to people who will give you an honest response and say, you know what? That is really a stupid idea. Or, hey, that's a terrific idea, but you know, if you tweak the product idea this way, then I'd really be interested in it. And by the way, I wouldn't pay 50 bucks for that. I'd pay 19 bucks for that. Well, that's great feedback for, uh, for the team to consider and go, hmm, maybe we've got to make some changes to this. So the business model competition is all about, have you gone out and tested those ideas to see which ones land? And did you make changes as a result? What happened when you, make those, when you made those changes? Did it resonate more with the, with the people you were testing with? And they went, hey, now that's spot on. That's something I'd actually uh, part with my hard-earned cash to get that in, you know, in, as part of my life. So we have those competitions. In April, we have the uh, Miller New Venture Challenge. Uh, that's a great competition that shows that you've gotten traction. It's a fancy way of saying, uh, do you have any agreements set up with potential partners? Uh, do you ha have you actually sold anything? Right? So you developed the idea, you validated that it was, it was a good idea. Did you have you actually sold any of that product? Um, and that's the winners of that competition. The top eight teams win $15,000 each. Why? Because we want the teams to be working on that business idea over the summer. So instead of taking internships, internships are great, but it's also great to spend a summer building out your own business idea with your team. And so $15,000 puts a little bit of food on the table. Maybe it goes toward rent a little bit. And you can spend the months of May, uh, June, July, and part of August building out that business idea. So that, that is part of the business com or the, uh, uh, the competition series that we have. That summer event, and last summer we had 20 different BYU teams participating in it. We housed it at uh, downtown Provo at the, uh, the startup building. Anybody been down there, uh, downtown Provo? Yeah. The startup building, uh, I, there's an event called One Million Cups that occurs there. And uh, that's just a weekly gathering for people in the community to come and talk about innovation and, uh, and business and, so, uh, and technology for that matter. So any of you are interested in finding out about kind of the innovation ecosystem in Provo, Wednesday mornings at 9 o'clock, go down to the startup building in downtown Provo, and you get to see a gathering of 75 to 100 people, some students, many not students, talking about technology and business opportunities. So that's a great, great place for you to hang out if you have a time slot that's available from 9 to 10 on Wednesday. So we have run this entire competition series. And then the last pillar of the center is the mentoring piece that I've been talking about. And one way I said is to go out to getmentoring.com, sign up, see the profiles of mentors. You get their email address, and you say, hey, I'm Sally, and this is what I'm interested in doing. I have a couple questions. Any way we could connect over a phone call or over breakfast? And these, these are, typical, are typically our alums, whether well, they're all alums, and they typically have money, so you probably won't have to put out any money for breakfast. They'll probably pick up the breakfast, but it's a nice conversation to have with them. So as we think about kind of the, 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 the cycle of the academic calendar 
as it deals with innovation and entrepreneurship. In the upper right, when we start out the year, we're talking about ideas and the big idea pitch. Over here, we're talking about expanding upon that idea and developing teams and pursuing that idea and validating that model that you've created, that business model, and that's what you see over here. Then over here, you work toward launching it. If you progress with that idea, how do you take that to market? And then finally, how do you grow it? How do you scale it from a business that may do $5,000 a year in revenue to one that may, may do $5 million or $50 million? Uh, over time, and so we'll teach you the principles there. So that's a little bit of background on the Rollins Center. I'm going to now cut over to Corbin Church, but before I do, let me, let me introduce Corbin. So Corbin is one of these, welcome Corbin, nice Thank to you. have you. <laughs> Traffic was bad, right? No, so, okay. I was sitting at Zupa's with my daughter. It was a good lunch. It was a good lunch with your and daughter, Corbin so. said, hey, starts at three. <laughs> oh! Very right good. There. Well, it gave me a chance to go deep into the Rollins Center, so this is good. Right. So Corbin is a serial entrepreneur. So he'll be happy to talk to you about successes and failures over the years of what he's done. He's also a professor here at, uh, at BYU. Uh, if you ever have a chance to take one of his classes, highly recommend it. He's energetic, knowledgeable. You'll have a good time. I've sat in on his classes, and he's an exceptional teacher. So as you look through the curriculum and decide what classes you want to take, he can help get a new idea off the ground and help you launch that, help you launch that business. Corbin's married, obviously he has at least one daughter, he has two teenage daughters, is that correct? Yep. And uh, does a lot of humanitarian work. Uh, fortunately, he's had some success in business and he gives back in a humanitarian sort, sort of way and loves to travel. So please welcome Corbin Church. Thanks, Yeah, there's another hand right here, please. 
Because I don't want to be a cog. Because you don't want to be a cog. A cog. I like that, sir. Freedom. Freedom. Okay, yes. Yeah, you do live on the edge. Entrepreneurs, we live on the edge, okay? Um, I'm driven by the edge as well, but also uh, you guys in the community creating jobs. I love it. It is cool to employ people. Guys. It's also very nerve-wracking. When you've got 150 people working for you, depending on you signing their paycheck, that'll keep you awake at night. That'll keep you awake at night. There's nothing out. We're good? Okay, why hasn't anybody been honest with me? Thank you. Who said that? We're supposed to be honest here, right? So most entrepreneurs are, a lot of us are in it because we want to make money. I'm going to talk about why today, your why, and why you do what you do. When I sat in your seat, I had a singular focus to make money. Didn't have a family yet, didn't know how important that was. Uh, my family's here. You guys don't have to sit back there. You can come on down front, be brave, take a seat. Um, but um, look, my focus was money. I have no regrets for that focus and that goal, but that's where I was, and it's okay. I'm gonna talk today with you about the focus on money. It's not making the money that's wrong, it's what you do with it, where it could go wrong, okay? We'll talk about that. Very important quote I share with all my classes. I'm going to teach one, and I'm not teaching this semester, so don't go looking too hard for me, okay? But this is something I start class with every single day. I die hard believe in entrepreneurism. And I believe that if you don't build your dream, someone else will hire you to build theirs, okay? You don't want to be a cog. I agree with you. Look, guys. You either work for somebody or you work for yourself. I can't think of an option beyond that. Retire. Unemployment. Okay. I'm not so many. Important quote. I really believe this. And for me, I can only work for myself. It doesn't work for me to work for somebody. I've signed every paycheck I've ever received in my life. I have never had a job. So, that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean you can't be an entrepreneur if you work at Arby's right now, but <clears throat> wow, if you're in one of my classes, I'll teach you the difference of starting your own business even while you're in college versus working at Arby's. I'm not ripping on shape for me. <coughs> it's kind of tasty. But okay, when I was at BYU, I had a diamond business. What does every BYU student buy? They buy them really big, they buy a lot of them diamonds. Well, I ran a diamond business here. I sold rings and diamonds. And it was a good business. Made about, my wife and I made about $50,000 a year. Okay, not a ton of money, but better than most students make. Okay, so, and I worked, the difference is, is how many hours I worked to make that money. A couple hours a day at best. I mean, not really, but you know, a couple hours here, a couple hours there. All right. Skip that slide because I was eating at Zumba's and we're out of time. What are the traits of an entrepreneur? Share with me. Fire away. Extrovert. Ambitious. Extrovert. Innovator. Innovator. Hardworking. Hardworking. Risk. Risk taker. Love it. Creative. Proactive. Problem solver. Problem solver indeed. Come on, back row. Speak up. Join us. Curious. Curious. Love it. Back there? They don't need someone to tell them what to do. That's right. They don't need someone to tell them what to do. Self-motivated. Okay. Yes, sir. Decisive. Decisive. Really important. She loved my mom, but she cannot make a decision to save her life. <laughs> she raised four entrepreneurs, and she can't make a decision. <laughs> Somebody else. We're good? Okay. So I compiled a list of traits. It's not exclusive, but here's my list. Entrepreneurs are outgoing. It's kind of hard to be an introvert and be an entrepreneur because you're the it man or woman. You need to be outgoing. You need to get out there and talk to people and promote that business. Promoting that business comes in all colors and stripes. It might be raising money. It might be selling your product. It might be keeping investors happy. But it is outreach. Okay? You've got to have a lot of confidence. You've got to believe in yourself. 
You are that it man or woman. It's not somebody else. You're leading the ship. You've got to be passionate, okay? You've got to believe in your product. You've got to be observant. What do I mean by observant? I'll come back to it in a minute. Visionary, okay? This is probably one of my greatest strengths. And what I mean by visionary, guys, the students pitch me, I probably look at about maybe six products a week during the semester when I'm teaching. And I'll look at a product, and they're spewing, talking about their product. My mind, if, I, if it clicked with me, my mind is gone. I am formulating the business plan for that product. So I think visionary is a big one for an entrepreneur. You've got to see what's out there, where you believe that product's going to go, okay? Determined. I'm teaching pluses and minuses of some of these, okay? But a, an entrepreneur definitely is determined, has a lot of determination. He's a listener. That's a new one that I've added to the list. An entrepreneur needs to be a good listener. You can be determined, pursuing a goal. But you can't believe so strongly that you have all the answers that you're not going to listen to somebody else. You do not and will not have all the answers. At my age, <coughs> I'm a little bit old, I think I'm new, but I'm not. I do not have all the answers, and I take a lot of advice in my businesses today. Frugal, savers. You guys, one of the biggest lessons that I can teach you here today First of all, how many of you have savings? Raise your hands high. Okay, well. Now, for the honesty factor, how many of you do not have savings? Thank you guys, I love you for your honesty. You must have money to be an entrepreneur. I was sitting at Thanksgiving dinner many, many years ago. My brother-in-law comes home from Ohio. He's sitting there talking. They're talking about this weight loss product. It's a bottle of weight loss pills, 50 bucks. Like, wow, people are so stupid. <laughs> this is uh, late 1990s. Serious? 50 bucks for 30 days worth of weight loss pills. You guys are dumber than a sack of rocks. And then they talked about how much money they were making. Oh, I want to join the dumber than a sack of rocks game. This looks fun. <laughs> I was sitting at Thanksgiving dinner on Thursday. On Monday, when I got back to my office, a window company, I took one of my team members, my staff, and I said, I want you to sit at this telephone, and I want you to dial every single mall in the country, and I want you to ask them, do you have a metabolite card? If they say yes, hang up and dial the next mall. If they say no, say, can I sign a lease today? We picked up 17 malls, literally calling every mall in the country. We picked up 17. In the next uh, year and a half, two years, we made millions of dollars. Why was I able to capitalize on that opportunity? Because I had money. I don't care how much money you save, you've got to save. If you're a spender, you're going to have a tough time being an entrepreneur. So start right now saving money. You come to me a year from now. You come up with this phenomenal idea to sell a backpack with little white pictures on it. And I look at it and I say, wow, a backpack with little white pictures on it is going to sell really well. Let's do it, right? Something. So you come to me and you pitch this idea. And you're asking me for $100,000. And I say, OK, it seems reasonable for backpacks with white pictures on it. Let's do it. I'm interested. What are you going to put in? What's your name? Mason. Mason? Do you have savings? Yeah. How much? Listen, ladies. <laughs> this answer is very important. Your dates are either going to skyrocket with this answer. <laughs> Holy mother of pearl, this kid's awesome! Okay? Forget me. Mine is not. Now they're all okay. Okay. Mason's awesome. He's saved up a lot of cash. I come to Mason and I say, all right, Mason. I'm willing to join you. I'm willing to put in $100,000. Usually the answer is two, by the way. And I say, I'm willing to put in. I'm willing to come in. Mason, what are you going to put in? <coughs> Mason says, you know what? I've only got four grand. I'm willing to put it all in. And he's sheepish. He's embarrassed that he only has four grand, right? 
how do I respond? Good or bad? Very good. The fact that Mason has four G's, and he's willing to put all four G's into his business idea, impressed the heck out of me. If Mason puts everything he has into our business, is he going to kill it? This guy is going to bust his tail to make our business succeed because he just put everything he has into it. Now, if Mason says to me, this is close, dude, I don't have any money. Sorry, Mason. You're a good dude, but no skin in the game? No game. Guys, savings is important. And when you start your business, if you're my business partner, I won't let you spend your money. One of the biggest mistakes new business owners, whether they're students or they're old people, they spend all their money. If we invest $100,000 into your business and it's gone before you executed your plan and you come back for more, you know what happens? It's a very painful discussion. It will cost you dearly. You gave me the plan. I didn't give you the plan. You told me how it was going to go and asked for 100 Gs. I came in. You didn't execute the plan. You spent the money too fast. The next 100 grand is going to cost you a lot of money. <coughs> Be frugal. Treat those funds like they are the most precious funds you have ever received. You don't mess with that money, OK? Throughout your business, even when you get big, stay frugal. It's a big one. OK, high risk tolerance. Fearless. You're not afraid to fail. You question conventional wisdom, OK? Entrepreneurs, you go along in life and somebody says, ah, oh, such a pain in the neck, right? When an entrepreneur hears, oh, such a pain, they say, there's an opportunity. The normal person says, deal with it, stand in line for four hours. The entrepreneur says, there's a better way around this. I'm going to figure this out. That's the difference. And that's <coughs> questioning conventional wisdom, OK? You revisit the rules, or you don't believe the rules exist. All right, so 90% of startups fail. Why do they fail? Money. Yes? Entrepreneurs believe in ideas further than they actually have merit. Have you taken my class? No, you haven't. I know you could have. But that's a great, that's the right answer. Okay? I showed you some traits earlier, guys. And those traits work against us as entrepreneurs. We have to have those traits to be successful entrepreneurs, but they also work against us. Specifically, your passion. Probably not many people have as much passion as I have. But my passion can get me in a lot of trouble. My vision, if it's flawed, but I'm passionate about it, can you imagine that? I'm determined and I'm passionately cruising down this road of a flawed vision. It doesn't look pretty. And this is what's wrong, is entrepreneurs get going on an idea or a business that they are just really firmly believing is going to be great. And it's not, OK? So the way we do this is we validate our product. Validation is a process you can learn in Nail It, Then Scale It. That's a great book. That's my favorite. The Innovator's Method also covers it. But we validate our product. And I like to say you have five grand in six weeks. You guys can do it for 500 bucks. Five grand, six weeks. You go out, you validate your product. If it validates, stay with it. If it doesn't, fail and get out. That's where people have a problem, is they won't fail when they should have gotten off the bus. OK? Super important. You'll learn that in Nick Greer's class, BM 170, or any of the 372 classes. OK? There's a couple 372s. Those are great classes on entrepreneurism, by the way. Nick Greer's class 170, it's the bomb. OK? Really good class. I recommend you take it. Um, but here I go back to being a good listener. 
And I think that this came out of Nail It Then Scale It, guys, or Innovator's Method, one of the two. Intellectual honesty above all. A willingness to face up to the facts rigorously, whether they prove you right or wrong. If you can be honest with yourself and say, hey, my idea maybe isn't working, or this path that I was on isn't working, and you can jump off it, it's going to do you good. You've got to be honest with yourself. When you're out asking people about your product, validating it, listen carefully and listen honestly. Don't listen to what you want to hear. Got it. You got to hear what they're saying. All right, so that's listen. Sorry, I'm going to move along here a little bit fast. Back to that save principle, being frugal and being a saver. Those who save have, those who have get. That's my personal belief. And that Thanksgiving story that I shared you kind of makes it real. Observant. You guys, it kills me when I walk around campus because students, you guys all have put your earbuds in, and you're walking around campus like this. Everywhere you go, you're doing this. It's your generation. My generation didn't have that. When I turned 16 and I got my driver's license, I didn't have GPS, I drove everywhere. Because for the past 16 years, I've been watching where my mom drove. I don't know if my kids can do that. You guys have to put your phones down. Ideas are all around us. Those pains that I talked about, ah, this is such a pain. You have to be observant in order to capitalize on ideas. You gotta talk to people. I love it when I'm sitting in the Tanner building preparing for class and some student comes, sits down on the bench and starts talking to me. It's like, oh, that's good. You gotta talk to people, okay? You gotta be observant, you gotta know what's going on around you. Earbuds in your phone and texting all the time, checking up on your social media, not a fan. You gotta be observant to see and realize ideas around us, okay? Ponder that. Maybe put your phone away, observant. Okay, one of the cool things I do in my class, I make my students go sit somewhere on campus, a place that they go to all the time. Maybe the library, maybe the bookstore, maybe the Cougar Eat. They have to sit there for 15 minutes. Do absolutely nothing but sit and observe everything that's going on around them. And come back to class and observe what they saw that they had never seen before. The answers are astounding. One person came in once and said, I was there in the bookstore, and they're like, wow, there was something in your bookstore. I, I haven't been to the bookstore for a long time, but some food or something. Like, wow, I walk through it every single day. But there's this smell of something cooking or sitting there, candy or popcorn or something. I don't know. Never observed the smell before because he was on a beeline going from point A to point B and never recognized it. It's a small example. It didn't turn into a multi-million dollar business, but be observant. High tolerance for risk, not afraid to fail. There is an article called Don't Send Your Kids to the Ivy League. The gentleman that wrote this article, I'll do it on time, okay? There's a great article, you should read it. Love to tell you about it, not gonna happen today. Wow, five minutes. Okay, so, not gonna do it. Lessons for along the journey. Uh, I'm sorry we skipped some great stuff, guys. I, I blew it, I didn't know it was at three. I used to start at 3.30. I've done this for a while, and I used to start at 3.30. So some things for you along the journey, guys, is you've gotta keep balance in your life. As entrepreneurs, we're super passionate. We're all about our business, we're about making money. You've got to maintain a balance, okay? And that balance consists of five things, five areas of life. I made this one for you guys because it includes school. You've got to have your work in balance. You've got to have your family, your health, your school, and your spirituality. Look at your life, each person individually. Are all five of those areas in balance? I can tell you that for you guys, school is probably consuming 50, 60, 70% of your time. So what's getting sacrificed? Something has to be sacrificed. When we get going on our businesses, guys, we're all passionate. And when it's your own business and you've got five people getting a paycheck from you, 
Man, you want to be sure there's money to pay those people. And so you stay into the evening and you keep working. That suffers. That suffers. That suffers. Don't let your family sacrifice for your business. Don't let your health sacrifice. We need to be passionate as entrepreneurs, but we are more successful as, as entrepreneurs when we have that balance. Integrity. I'm going to share quickly one of a fantastic book by Clayton Christensen. We all know Clayton Christensen, member of the church, Harvard Business Law professor. Clayton would go back to, he wrote a book called How Will You Measure Your Life? And in this book, Clayton talked about how he would go back to his five-year reunions after graduating with his master's degree. He'd go back and he'd meet with his class. And he says, as we got later into our class reunions, it was very interesting to see the changes in the dynamics of my classmates' <laughs> lives. He said it was sad is what it was. Because when you graduate with a master's degree from Harvard, you're making a lot of money. You are running the biggest companies in the world. You generally have your ticket written. He said, all those people in that circumstance, how interesting as I watched their lives transform. Because the more years that go went by, the more that were separated from their wives, the more them were divorced, estranged from their children, and eventually, jail time. So how will you measure your life? It's really important. Clayton asked three questions of his students or gave them advice. Three things at the end of class every single day. I'll share those with you. Every day, work diligently to be happy in your career. Have quality family life. What do you think number three is? Stay out of jail. One of his classmates ended up in jail because he got a little too aggressive trying to make money. Had so much money, kept going for more. Ended up in jail. Okay? So how do you measure your life? Great book. By the way, that article, take some time and read it. That article was called, uh, Don't Send Your Kids to the Ivy League. Dallas Morning News. It's a quick read. Super cool article about risk taking. Write that down, read it on your own, you'll love it. It's really cool. And lastly, when I work with students here and I mentor, I mentor a lot of student companies and I'm happy to mentor you and yours. When I mentor student companies, I don't charge. I give you a lot of my time and I'll happily work with you. And this is my fee. That you figure out some aspect of your company that you will give back. Okay? One of my companies was called Michi Bag. We had a, a handbag that had a very simple concept where you would, women, you could leave all your stuff inside the bag. You didn't have to change it so that your bag matched your outfit. You simply took off one exterior and you put another one on. And just like that, you totally changed the look of your bag. So you could have lots of different looks of bags, but all of your, you call it stuff, you call it junk. All of your stuff would stay inside. You guys, one of the greatest business lessons I ever learned was with this company. About two years in, we created an exterior called Hope. This is a Hope exterior. There were many of them. And we took all the proceeds from the sale of that exterior and we donated them to cancer research. We did that because I lost my dad to cancer the month when we started this business. My dad was super close to me. So I said, let's do this. I thought it would be good if we could donate some money to cancer. The first year we donated $705,000, the second year a million, and it continued to grow from there. But the lesson that I learned was this. When you give back and you do it honestly, you do it from the heart, you don't do it to grow your business, you don't do it to bring in customers. That right there told our customers that we were a company of heart, that we had heart and that we cared, and it drove throngs of people to our business. Okay? Really cool. So strong advice to you. Wow, I've been shut down. Um, strong advice to you is to have that. Sorry, I'm going to keep it. Two more seconds. Maybe a little bit more than two. This day, we're going to
I want to ask you, what is your why? The last thing I'll ask you is, what is your why? Because, guys, this will make the difference between success and failure in your business. Knowing why you're doing what you're doing and holding on to that why. Mine was a passionate desire to make money. I was driven, I was all those things. If you bear, if you just keep funneling it down to one thing, you say, okay, well, probably this, but well, why that? Well, oh, maybe this, why that? What would be that underlying thing? The answer was on the screen. To be happy. That should be your why, and that should be what drives you. So, oh, keep going. That should be your why. Don't ever sacrifice that why right there for your business. Okay? So important. Too many business people, men and women, entrepreneurs, are so passionate about their business that they lose their family. David O. McKay said, no success can compensate for failure in the home. Walk out of here today with that. Be passionate, be frugal, be determined, be visionary. Go kill it. Be an entrepreneur because that is so rewarding, such a rewarding path in life. But don't sacrifice the success of your business for your family. Okay? Good luck to you guys as entrepreneurs. Business School has my